My younger brother, who was jet lagged on a flight, flying from, uh, from the US to, to the, uh, the UK, the first thing I did was I took him to get a blood test. And his levels were 37 nanomoles per liter. Hey health enthusiasts, it's Mike here. Every week we're diving into the wonderful world of hormone balance and wellness. But this journey is incomplete without you. So if you're ready to restore balance and achieve health, don't forget to hit that like button, share our health quest with your friends, and subscribe to make sure you stay in the loop. And don't let hormones play hide and seek. Ring that notification bell to keep them in check with our latest updates. Together, we can make wellness a way of life. Ready to restore balance? Let's go. So with Balance My Hormones, we're three segments in one. There's, there's the, the blood testing service, which is empowering patients to have a look at where the hormone levels are or other biomarkers, you know, whether it has to do with diabetes, testosterone for females, for HRT, because we know for, for ladies, uh, they don't really get much measurement other than, hey, you're, you've hit this age, you've got some hot flashes, here's some hormone cream. And many of our female patients, more balanced approach, they want bioidentical estrogen, bioidentical testosterone, and bioidentical progesterone. But the blood testing service on its own, it's very valuable because in the team, we'll have case managers that will talk to these, these patients, kind of understand what their needs are, and then triage them uh, to a doctor should they want to go further with, with their care. And then they've got the case manager to support them afterwards. So you can come in, be just a blood testing patient, or continuously receive blood tests, or you can go further into treatment. And for the males, like I said earlier, it's a really good idea for young men, men who are into fitness and health, to look at what the baseline is, especially when you are when you feel optimized, when you feel really healthy, you've got good libido, you know, eating and sleeping correctly, get that test done in your 20s, frame it, keep it on the wall, put it in a vault, save it, don't let it disappear. And then if things start going south, you know, erections aren't working, you might be able to refer back to that. And so yeah. what happens sometimes are patients who are having those symptoms may have had a really high level of testosterone, well above the national ranges. Because I can tell you that the end of the range in most, for most of the labs is 29 nanomoles per liter. My younger brother, who was jet lagged on a flight, flying from, uh, from the US to, to the, uh, the UK, the first thing I did was I took him to get a blood test. And his levels were 37 nanomoles per liter off the charts, he's not on TRT, completely natural, bit of a yoga person, or very much a yoga person, but other than that, he's a balanced diet. He has really high levels, but one would argue, it's too high, so we, you just, they're outside of the chart, but they're not, it's, he's natural. So those, those ranges aren't fit for purpose. So anyway, the point is, you can get a, a young person who feels really good, have those levels off the chart, but then when they're older, they're still within the normal ranges, maybe they're 27, 26, 20, but that's not optimized for that individual patient who used to be 37, 38, 39, and they'll just get fobbed off by, by the NHS or even some other you know, clinics that don't know better. So we, we would like to have that data so that we can look back, you know, and, and if you have symptoms now, oh, that's the justification for that. So also there are genetic tests that you can do to look at how receptive your androgen receptor is. I mean, this is shown in some of the the studies that we adhere to, the ISSAM guidelines talk about there's CAG repeats. So in your genome for the androgen receptor, if your CAG repeats are really far apart, you might be more resistant to testosterone. Therefore, you need higher levels of testosterone than the person who has short CAG repeats. And so that's something to consider. They're just very hard to get these tests done. But there is evidence that just because you fall outside the very narrow NHS range doesn't mean that you wouldn't qualify for treatment. And other more bold, more brave organizations, societies, one of them is the British Society for Sexual Medicine, but they were still too timid and afraid of upsetting the endocrinology societies. They decided levels around 12 nanomoles per liter would be optimum for treatment and below, provided their symptoms. And in some cases, maybe looking at the calculated free testosterone as well than just looking at the total, right? So that's something that we use as a first line of, of looking at the patient, but we also defer to the ISSAM guidelines, the International Aging Male Study, that would, would has quoted that uh, testosterone deficiency can occur, symptoms of the deficiency can occur as high as 15 nanomoles per liter. So we have to look at the big picture and also mentions the CAG repeats, it also mentions looking at free testosterone that might be under 0.347 
Nana Mola's Palita. So when we get people that come on board into the service, one of the services are the blood tests. The next service is we have to look at those blood tests and the symptoms of the patient, and then they could get moved into being um, a patient, especially for TRT. And then there's the whole support that goes along with it, where we're supporting them with the, the doctor care. So they get a doctor's consultation, uh, they get follow-up doctor's consultations, uh, follow-up blood tests at six weeks, six months, one year, and doctor's consultations that usually match that, that rhythm. Usually six months, one year, and nearly thereafter, but we too, do try to offer more consultations on an ad hoc basis if needed. And consultations with the case manager who is their support and patient advocate. So that's very unique in the industry that we create a, a patient, a patient advocate. Some of these patient advocates, case managers, you know, may have been in the healthcare field before. Others are big advocates for TRT, very knowledgeable patients themselves. So sometimes just having someone to talk to makes a big difference. And there's no extra charge for that part of the service. And that's what, that's what we offer. Uh, helps make us unique. And then the third part is the pharmacy part. So you know, these aren't supplements per se. They're not something you go buy at Whole Foods or, or one of your favorite uh, health food shops. You know, they're licensed medications. And many times these are controlled substances, especially testosterone, and they have to be handled appropriately. And, you know, our sister company called The Hormonist, Hormonist Limited, yeah, it looks very similar, the branding to the to balance of hormones. I uh, do what we say on the tin, we are there to help support very unique types of different hormones that are available. So some of the hormones, uh, or the testosterone in particular, you know, we always defer to the, uh, the licensed product in the UK. Some of the more cost-effective licensed options are Sustanon. We had an issue with supply for that for a while, but everything's fine now. Um, but when that doesn't work for a patient, either because they get post-injection pain or they're allergic to peanuts, then we've been able to, you know, through the, the legal framework, import um, other types of medication either from the excuse me either from the USA or from Europe so medications that are licensed in those other countries and this is one of the nice parts about the UK you can legally bring them into the to the, uh, to the UK in addition we also can make compounded creams like I just mentioned the testo cream that for guys that don't want to do the injections can apply the creams to the scrotum or other parts of the body but the scrotum is a bit thinner get better absorption. Um, you get a little bit of an added bonus from an elevation in dihydrotestosterone as well for men, which helps with some of the sexual dysfunctions that men may experience. So it's, it's a nice, nice option for patients who are a bit fearful of needles in that regard. And we've got some needle training and injection training that we offer patients as well uh, that the doctor will review, case managers can support, and we've got some other documentation and, and guides on, on how to do that, both video guides as well as guides that patients would read up to make sure they're safely able to, to do their injections. And just like that, we've crossed the finish line of another insightful journey through the world of hormonal health. If you found this chat as valuable as we did in bringing it to you, why not give us a like to show your support? And remember, knowledge is best when it's shared. So pass this video along to your mates. Speaking of support, have you subscribed to our channel yet? If not, consider doing so now. You, we'd be chuffed if we had you on board to our community of wellness enthusiasts. Hit the notification bell, it'll keep you in the loop so you won't miss out on the latest natter about health and balance, and you'll get the YouTube video directly to you. And if you've enjoyed this video, there's plenty more where it came from. We have a wealth of different videos exploring various corners of health and well-being. Speaking of which, why not take a look at these? They're a few of our favorites, and we reckon you'll find them particularly enlightening. Thank mm -hmm. you.